Hi, friends. We use a multimeter very often. I mean us, radio amateurs. Many of us have multimeters powered by a 9-volt 6F22 type battery. If the multimeter doesn't have auto power off, then the batteries will have to be changed very often. But even with auto power off with active use, you need to change the battery exactly several times a year. Many people are tired of it and begin to look for an alternative to the 6F22 battery. Supplied by a lithium battery is the most popular. But one lithium battery has a nominal voltage of 3.7 volts and the multimeter needs 9, so a voltage converter is needed. Buy a compact DC-DC converter isn't a problem. The popular MT3608 board costs about $1 and is affordable for everyone. This converter has no load current of about 1.5 mA. That is, the battery current is consumed even if the multimeter is disconnected. If the battery is capacious, it's not scary. Otherwise, we can add a switch and disconnect the battery from the converter board every time. In any case, we need to open the multimeter and housing a battery, a converter, and a switch inside. In order to avoid additional alterations, many push it all into the box from the 6F22 battery itself. In addition, now we can buy a ready-made battery of this standard on a lithium battery with a converter. But the price is pretty decent. In order to feed multimeter from a lithium battery, we need to find a compact battery, for example 400 mAh, as well as a converter and charge board, which will charge battery from the USB port. As can be seen from the block diagram, the converter is always connected to the battery and consumes some current from it, even in idle mode. As a converter, it is very desirable to use one build on the basis of the ME2149 chip or like that. Such converters can easily be bought online and they are very cheap. The advantage is that they have a very small no-load current, about 2 to 300 microampere. I ordered several such converters, but I got tired of waiting for the parcel and decided to go some other way. I have many MT3608 converters, which I have already mentioned. Taking into account the battery capacity and the no load current of this converter, our battery will completely die in 30 to 40 days, even if it isn't used. This is no good. Therefore, it was decided to remake the converter board, after which it began to consume a current of only 50 to 55 microamperes instead of more than 1 milliampere. This means that our battery is completely discharged in 300 days and this is already cool. How to remake the converter MT3608 I already showed in one of the past videos. I strongly advise you to watch the video. There everything is shown and explained in detail. Here is the original circuit and this is already converted. First, you need to apply a voltage of about 4 volts to the converter input and set 9 volts at the output by rotating the trimmer resistor. But you can just remove the trimmer and solder in its place 70 kilo ohms constant resistor. Further, with something sharp, we separate fourth pin of the chip from the fifth. And then we collect everything according to the circuit. Of course, you can do everything prettier by etching the new board, but I don't see the point because only a few components have been added to the circuit and an outboard assembly is quite sufficient. And you can always order beautiful factory boards on the GLC website. Production time is only 24 hours from the time the order is received. Boards can be of any size, color and number of layers. The factory can manufacture the boards of any complexity. You will get the highest quality at the most affordable prices for only $2 per batch of boards with dimensions of 10 to 10 cm. A link to the GLC website can be found in the description. Just in case, I say a few words about the operation of the circuit. Pin 4 allows you to control the converter. If power plus voltage on it, then the converter starts. If it goes to ground, then it turns off. In the off state, the converter consumes a meager current, previously mentioned 50 to 55 microampere. If a load is connected to the output of the converter, a certain voltage drop is formed on the resistor. This is enough to trigger a low power transistor. Through the open transistor to the fourth pin of the chip comes plus. The converter starts and at its output we get the desired voltage, in our case 9 volts. 
Rework doesn't take much time and costs little. Transistor is any small or medium power. I advise you to take transistors with a high gain current. I had to cut the MT3608 board to fit into the case. Electrolyte of 10 microfarads is added at the output to smooth out the pulsations. The charging system is standard, built on the basis of the TP4056 chip. The board has a charge indicator and a battery protection. This model will allow you to charge the lithium battery from a normal USB port with a current of up to 1 ampere. My battery has a capacity of only 400 milliampere hour, so I reduce the charge current twice by replacing the current setting resistor on the board. The table of the dependence of the charging current on the resistance of this resistor is now before you. This board also had to be cut. The battery protection system was thrown out because the battery itself already had such protection. The box was printed on my little 3D printer. During operation, the printer had to be moved, and as a result, the box came out not entirely successful. I was lazy to reprint, so I left it as it was. It isn't fatal. All components perfectly got into the case. For reliability, the boards were coated with epoxy so that the battery can be safely dropped. Well, now let's look what we did. We stick the battery in the multimeter, which is now disconnected. As you can see, the battery voltage is about 4 volts, which means that our converter is in sleep mode and consumes an insignificant current from the battery. Now we turn on the multimeter and check the battery voltage again. As we can see, it is already around 9 volts, which means that the system has reacted to the load and the converter has started up. Everything works fine, otherwise the multimeter would show a low battery icon. This battery is specially made for a multimeter and it is no longer possible to connect to it, for example, a small incandescent lamp or other voracious loads. If you connect those kind of loads, it will do nothing because the output current from our converter is limited by the resistor. But for low power consumers like LEDs or remote controls, a battery will work without any problems. Many will have a question, why all this fuss? Why not to buy a rechargeable 6F22 battery? Perhaps you're right, but if you want to have everything you need and know what to do, then you should try. For example, I spent only $4 on the whole thing. I took a battery from a player that was bought for $2 and the rest is very cheap. In any case, I hope that the method of creating a lithium battery specifically for a multimeter will be useful to many. Please don't forget to subscribe to our group on electronics and rate this video if it was useful. All the necessary information, including links to purchase of all components for this project and ready-made batteries can be found in the description. Now I have to say goodbye, until we meet again. With you was Kasyan TV.